Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, live on Channel Scavish in Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. President Buhari to know his fate tomorrow as the Abuja Division of the Court of Appeal delivers judgment on the suit challenging his qualification for the 2019 presidential election. Former President Dr. Goodluck Jonathan insists the implementation of key recommendations of the 2014 National Conference will resolve many challenges facing the country. Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki talks tough, vows to resist pressure from politicians to use public funds for individual purposes. And United Kingdom raises threat to British shipping in Iranian waters to highest level on risk of attack in the Gulf region. For more information on our top stories and others, just go to our website, it's channelcv.com. Subscribe and watch Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channel CV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. And besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel CV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature so you can use it to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and its sister agency, the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, in collaboration with non-governmental organizations, embarked on a march against corruption across the country today. The event is to mark the African Union's African Anti-Corruption Day 2019. Stakeholders across different states asked citizens to join the fight against corruption, while experts say over 50 billion naira is stolen from Africa annually. To the average Nigerian, one of the major plagues bedeviling the nation and the continent's development aspirations is corruption. Experts say about $50 billion is siphoned annually from Africa through illicit financial flow, and Nigeria bears a huge percentage of that figure. To spotlight the importance of fighting corruption, stakeholders across Nigeria are marching the streets to mark the African Anti-Corruption Day 2019 with the theme towards a common African position on asset recovery. Well, the, the, rally the State Commission of the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC in Kaduna State, corruption. highlights some of the creative approach the Anti-Graft Commission deploys to curb corruption. The Commission is now putting more efforts into non-conviction-based asset recovery. That is, when you recover stolen assets or illegally or illicitly acquired assets from those who might have taken them without necessarily prosecuting them. In the north-central state of Benue and Kwara, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in collaboration with security agencies, the National Orientation Agency, and non-governmental agencies rally across major streets to mark the day. You know, it's been estimated that at least about $50 billion have been siphoned out of Africa on a yearly basis through illicit financial flow. I'm appealing to all the stakeholders to join hands with the Commission to ensure that we recover our common patrimony, carted away by the looters, most importantly with the recent whistleblowing policy on the federal government. Similar rallies take place in the southern state of Oshun, Lagos and Akwaibom, with renewed calls to citizens to be vocal against corruption, as it has direct and indirect impact on society. Not only when you fight corruption, it fights back. It fights back. And uh, we still need, uh, the members of the public need, need more awareness to accept this fight as a general fight, not for us alone. We are duty bound to come out and showcase our activities to the members of the public so that we get them enlightened, get them synthesized, so that together we can put our heads together, fight the scotch to the lowest ebb. The consensus among the anti-graft agencies and other stakeholders is that the monster called corruption can only be defeated through strategic collaboration with everyone on board. They say, if you see something, then say something. Jeffrey Uzongo.
Channels Television News. Let's examine this issue further and we go live to Abuja Studios where the Executive Director, Transparency International Nigeria, Mr. Anwar Rafsanjani, joins us. You're welcome to the News at 10. Thank you, Thank you and good evening, U.S. US. Let's begin with a report released today by your organization, naming the police, the legislature, and judiciary as topping the list of corrupt institutions in the country. So does this indicate that there has been no progress made in the fight against corruption over the years? Well, uh, let me say that um, this, uh, this study of measuring incidents of corruption in Africa, which Nigeria was also included, uh, clearly indicates that you know um, corruption is still very high in the continent in Africa and of course in Nigeria and some of the institutions that were sampled many Nigerians believe that uh, still police has you know uh, become one of the top you know government you know agencies that we need to do a lot in order to deal with issues of corruption and this is basically because the police encounter with public on a regular basis you know and you know um, the level of extortion that the ordinary person you know um, meet you know from the police is even twice you know in terms of uh, the rich people. You find out that the foreigners they pay or they are forced to pay bribe twice than even the rich people. This is what this report you know uh, entail. And again, still uh, the incident of corruption still shows, unfortunately, that you know um, the legislature in Africa is still, you know, uh, seen as one of the um, corrupt institutions. And, of course, you know, other uh, agencies like uh, public, you know, um, uh, places like uh, hospital clinics, you know, they are also in the list of where people, you know, believe that corruption is still, you know, uh, on the high rise in, you know, in, in those categories, you know. So I think, you know, um, corruption, while corruption is being raise and continue to you know uh, become one of the top issues in africa because of the consequences of the corruption which led to underdevelopment which led to the insurgency poverty which led to unemployment and you know total you know um discomfort in the society and even the kind of diplomatic uh displeasure that we find ourselves for example nigeria today is still facing so many challenges within the countries like you can take for example even south africa for you to even get visa you spend you know uh, one and a half months for your visa to be approved you know the same thing with the british you know with the americans everywhere so which means that we need to do a lot in order to improve the image you know and the integrity the political integrity of our country otherwise you know as long as we would continue to just pay a lip service to issues of the fight against corruption, we will find it difficult to actually um, deal with the corruption. The assets recovery that government is actually uh, interested in, still we have challenges you know, in it because we did not have you know, any legal framework to manage the recovered asset. A lot of institutions are recovering you know, uh, stolen assets, police, ICPC, EFCC, custom, many of the agencies, you know, over 10 of them, they all recover assets. But still, we have not been able to have, you know, a legal framework that will manage how these assets are actually managed so that they will not be looted, you know. And this is part of the challenge that we even have. Many assets, both domestic and international, uh, you know, have not been able to be successfully taken because of this poor or lack of... Uh, uh, legal framework in place. Again, the policy on whistleblowing, as good as it is, you know, we still need to have a legal framework that will guarantee and protect whistleblowers. It's not enough just to give incentives uh, by giving money, but you need to protect the people that are actually blowing this. And until we have a legal framework that will guarantee and protect the whistleblowers, it will be difficult, you know, for us to be able to actually encourage Nigerians to even come out. Again, on the issues of declaration of assets you know by politician many politicians are actually not doing the right thing because the code of conduct itself where you would you know uh, go and declare your asset they also have less than 20 investigators to investigate and verify public office holders that are over 5,000 in Nigeria of their asset in Nigeria and abroad so if we are serious about about fighting corruption we must we must strengthen our institutions and we provide them with legal or rather you know, enabling resources in terms of competence hands, 
you know, enabling manpower to be able to do the work. Otherwise, we will be paying lip service to the fight against corruption. Mr. You know, we are happy at the level of Transparency International that, you know, government is actually popularizing and drawing the attention of Nigerians about the consequences and implication of corruption. But beyond that, we need to be seen to be meeting the commitment that the Nigerian government has done. In 2016, the president of Nigeria went to London on the anti-corruption conference and he made commitments including beneficial ownership register and access recovery as well as many other issues that will really help in terms of fighting corruption that will institutionalize fight against corruption beyond just personalization. So we need to see that the commitment that government has made is actually followed to the letter beyond just um, uh, making statement without actually putting you know, institutional framework that will deal with issues of corruption in Nigeria. That's great, Mr. Rafsanjani. That's a good way to leave it. A pleasure sharing your thoughts with us on the News at 10. Thank you very much. Now let's go back to our Abuja studios where Malpe is standing by with more stories. Hello, Melinda. It's always good to see you. Now, representatives of various groups, including market women, teachers, and the youth, have praised the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, for various achievements his administration has recorded in the state. The different groups were speaking at a solidarity rally held in support of Governor Obaseki at the National Museum grounds, King Square, in Benin City, the state capital. Our correspondent, Jessica Olubusere, reports. It's an assortment of excited interest groups that have converged on the grounds of the National Museum at the King Square in Bini City, the Edo State capital, in spite of the light showers. Their mission here is to show publicly their support for the state government, and the arrival of the governor and his team is greeted with cheers. One after the other, the different group heads, markets and youth leaders state the reasons for their conviction. We don't talk and say, we go follow and go anywhere where they go. Our pastor in our eight years, now we give away go take work for the state. We market women, we they enjoy before, but now we can't enjoy past. We have a dope job, a dope production center is there. Edo Innovation Hub is there. The youth are being empowered. What else do we want? The governor has come to deliver the dividends of democracy to us in Edo State. Governor Godwin Obaseki uses the opportunity to pledge to do more for Edo people. Our focus is you, the people of Edo State, not anybody. Our focus is to use the money we have in Edo State to develop you and to develop Edo State, not any individuals. Our focus is to continue to build the roads, to build the infrastructure of Edo State. For those of you who have gone outside to Abuja to say that people from outside should come and invade Edo, to come and seize our House of Assembly, we are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. What we are going through today, we went through 10 years ago. The same thing, nothing has changed. It's just unfortunate that some people who were with us when we started that struggle, Today, we do not know what has happened to them. But it is a struggle we will win. Because it is a struggle that says that the people must lead. The celebratory mood remains with a crowd of supporters, even as the governor departs the rally grounds. We are behind you, Mr. Governor. 
And back here in Abuja, President Muhammadu Buhari has written to the Senate seeking the confirmation of Justice Tanko Mohammed as Chief Justice of Nigeria. The President's request comes after the National Judicial Council recommended Justice Mohammed as is a substantive Chief Justice of the country. President Buhari, in a separate letter, informed the Senate of his decision to appoint 15 special advisers. Both letters were read on the floor of the Senate by the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan. When the news at 10 returns, OPEC sees lower demand for its crude oil in 2020 as the cut supply forecast for non-cartel members. That's some business news. To join us again.